I would like to introduce you all to Michael Kapto, who I'm sure you all know, who will Some be of you. sharing with us about Hackman Tech Playhouse. You can believe that the Guptos have been in Berwick for since the 1600s. Um, how, where we got here, I know we came from Portsmouth, uh, came inland, maybe up the river from Portsmouth, not really sure. I wasn't there, but uh, it's, it's family lore. It's, it's, we have some historical documents that tell you that the, the Gupto family moved to Berwick in the late 1600s, they established the farm that we're at right now where Hackmatack is. Um, the, um, you know, it's always been a farm there, except for when we turned it into a theater. But, uh, you know, we always is a substance farming, uh, you know, for, for quite a few years. My, my uh, niece, Amy, uh, has prepared something very nice. <laughs> Thank you. About the very first Guptils. Uh, Thomas Guptil, uh, his last name was actually, at the time, was Gubtail, G-U-B-T-A-I-L. Somehow, somewhere, it got changed to G-U-P-T-I-L-L, -L. but it was originally Gub Tail. He came from Portsmouth, and um, he was alive 1650 to 1695. Um, his son was Nathaniel Guptel. Thomas, Nathaniel's the first one in, in Berwick, or Thomas? Yeah, Thomas was the one that came from England. Uh, Nathaniel, um, was the first one to establish the, the farm here in Berwick. And then, to make it confusing, we've named every other generation Samuel Guptel. <laughs> so Nathaniel had a son called Samuel, lived from 716 to 1761. He had a son named Nathaniel. This gets confusing. 1754 to 1841, he's Buried, he was buried in the cemetery, it says he? Yeah, in our family cemetery, which is out in back of our house on the, on the farm. He was alive during the French and Indian War, and uh, I'm not sure he fought either in the Civil, uh, the um, Revolutionary War or 1812 War, or both. Why not? It's kind of confusing. Um, he had a son named Samuel, 1794 to 1879. He's in that family cemetery, too. Um, and then Granville. So all these Guptals lived in the house. Well, the very first one, uh, which would have been Nathaniel, uh, there was another house on the property that's really up where my brother's house is now, if you know, you know where my brother lives. <laughs> Anyways, up where my brother lives, Stephen. That was the original house up there, and it was it was uh, burnt by uh, Native Americans in the King Philip's War, the Salmon Falls Massacre. Some of you historians might know more about the Berwick history uh, than I do in that regard, but it was, it was burnt down at that time. And then he, or the next generation, built the house which we live in right now. Um, it's changed a lot over the years. Um, there was original kind of cape type house, and then back it would have been probably one of the Samuels or Granville uh, built on to that house another cape onto the other cape, and some of you may know that recently we did a major rework of the house and um, just kind of made some modern changes. There wasn't any any solder that had fallen off the foundation. The older part of the house had fallen off the foundation. We really couldn't, it's hard to live there anymore. So we kind of made a whole remodel of the house, make, modernized it, but it's in the same place. Um, so anyways, um, the, the Granville that I just spoke about uh, was the first guy who really kind of entertained in that area. He, one of the many things he did was play violin, made violins. We have a lot of his violin pieces and violins that he's made, pieces of his violins and models of his violins in one of our barns at, at home, which is kind of interesting to look at. Uh, so he kind of entertained. And then, then his son, whose name was Samuel, um, eventually moved 
into the house that Amy now lives in, which is the, which is the farm right next door to ours, which has the forget-me-not. Some of you may have been around long enough to know the, when the forget-me-not forget was open. He was the one that opened that. Samuel did. <laughs> that Samuel. But Samuel also had a, um, a dance hall up there in, in the barn. Uh, so it was never a barn for animals. All the animals were at our farm. And that barn was for other things, including a great little dance hall upstairs, which is kind of interesting. And Amy, you could have a dance hall up there now, if you wanted to. Right, by the way, there's a little ticket booth built on the house. So, I mean, that's kind of how we are. We've got a ticket booth built into the house. So I assume my, my great, great grandfather Samuel did that. So Samuel had a, uh, a son named Lewis, uh, who was my grandfather. He uh, entertained in the area uh, all the time. He, was a, he loved to play bands. In fact, uh, I've got some history things here. I'll send some of these pictures around. This, I, I don't know exactly when this picture is, but this is, this is a picture of um, one of my relatives with a couple of oxen in front of what we call the old barn. But you can just move that around if you if you're familiar with, uh, with Hackman Jack, you've been over there, you kind of recognize it. When my wife and I restored the house, yeah. we took off the porch that you'll see on that because um, uh, it was falling apart. It's all rotted out. Mm -hmm. Can I just sniff a second? Yeah. Just and so this yeah. is the whole part, right? Yeah, that's the house. That, that's, yeah, well, the whole house is there right now, but the right. porch that we used to have is gone. We have a different port on the back now. But I, um, kind of going backwards on this. I'm trying to put these in order. I'm not quite sure which, which is which, but this is about the same time period, which is, is, is kind of a neat, this is, this is what she's got here. I'll just this for one second. This is a, a winter sleigh, and it's one of my relatives um, selling meat out of a meat box. Some of your relatives might have bought the meat that we were selling. Okay. Don't know. It was winter time, so the meat was cold. Probably didn't have too much bacteria. <laughs> uh, that meat box we have right now, it's up in one of the barns in our house. It's on the sleigh that you see right there in the picture. Uh, and if you open the thing up, you can see all the little cuts in it from my grandfather, great-grandfather, cutting meat for one of your family members who hopefully didn't die of bacteria. This is about the same time period, maybe a little bit later. You can see, a bond. I, I point out this bond that you see because uh, in the next photo, that, one, that photo probably is from eight, late 1800s or early 1900s. Um, and this has got to be from 1945 or so. This, you, maybe somebody can identify that truck and identify the year of that truck. What was good at? I, I, I point that out because uh, in 1939, we had a fire at the, um, at the farm, and it burnt down the old barn that you can see in the first early pictures. And then my grandfather took that barn that was across the street and moved it over to where it is now, and that's what the hack attack is now. Um, and it was interesting, a, f a few years ago during a matinee, I had a, here's my son Aaron who was missing this, Hey, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, you can make it. Uh, Show must go on, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I was going. I was talking about the barn. Oh yeah, I was going to say uh, maybe 15 years ago or so, uh, an old fellow came out of one of the matinees that we had at the theater, and he said uh, he came out to me and said, "Are you the owner now?" I said, "Yeah." He said. Last time I was here, there was the barn was on fire. <laughs> I said, what? 
My, my father always told, told me about the fire in 1939. He was 10 years old. And this guy was about 10 years old at that time, too. He was over in a farm two, three places um, uh, beside us on the other side of Amy. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the barn goes up in flames, and of course, if you're a kid, you, you run over to watch it. No fire trucks around at that time. That road wasn't finished at that time. There was no Route 9. Uh, that was just an unpaved road uh, at that time. Uh, so, anyways, we were, uh, as I went through the generations, I, I was at my, my grandfather, Lewis, um, and he started a lot of bands all around in the area. And this is one of his bands. It's uh, a North Berwick band. He's, uh, he's in the back row, second to the left. But it's kind of a fun picture to look at these old North Berwickians. And uh, I don't know if I know of anybody else in that band. Maybe if I brought it over to the North Berwick Historical Society, they could point them out. But there's some, some interesting faces there, isn't there? It's the North Berwick, North Berwick band. <laughs> you know what year that was? The North Berwick band? Is there a year on there? Uh, it's it's got to be 30s, 40s maybe, 30s. Was, was Herbie Cole in the band? He could have been. I, I don't know. Did you know Herbie Cole? No. He was from North Berwick. Yeah. He was a drummer. Well, he may have been in the band. He, my my grandfather started bands all over the place. He was a he was a granger. He was a state grange master and a, the local grange master. He was he built the Beaver Dam Grange. If uh, it's burnt down twice and he built it twice, um, and, and uh, um, but he always had a band there, and that's I think where my father got interested in and doing bands and vaudeville things, whatever, in, in the Grange. And I, here's, a, here's a picture of my um, father who did a, you would like this one too, let me pass this one. This is a picture of my father who did um, some kind of uh, pageant for the town of Berwick. Uh, he was probably not too far out of high school. It was probably, it was probably uh, 1940s. <laughs> he's got dead bodies in there. He's got black faced people in there. He's got um, a lot of things that, I don't know if it happened in Berwick or not, but this was something that he had, he had put on as if it did happen in Berwick. He wrote a little pageant. Nowadays you don't have black face. It's a very much of a no-no, but back in 1940, I, I don't think we had too many black citizens in Berwick ever, but maybe this more than I know about. He's holding the American flag. He's in the middle. My dad's holding in the middle, holding the American flag. That's definitely where he would be. Hold the American flag in the middle of the picture. Um, so, in uh, this is. Here's a photo of uh, the farm in 1968 or so, 1970. Uh, an aerial view. There used to be a guy who would come over with, uh, come over everybody's farm, take a picture of it from the air, and, and try to sell it to you. Yeah. And sure enough, we bought one. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting. That's when we used to have. Uh, that was after we sold the cows that we had. My dad sold the cows in the late 60s. And he started the theater in 1972, but um, this was in that time period, before we started the theater. Um, that's kind of interesting. During that time, we had a farm stand out front where we sold uh, vegetables. And you can see the little farm stand over now. Oh, that's vegetables? Yeah. And Michael, what happened to that road? Oh, it's still there. That's just the road that we used to get to the back pastures. That's yeah. still there? Yeah. Yeah, that's just that's where the bison are out in this field right now. Oh. Also, it's that little dirt road that yeah. goes out to the pigs. Yeah, the goes out to the pigs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in 1972, my dad started the uh, Hackmatack Playhouse. He had a. Uh, uh, he'd always been interested in the theater since uh, the days 
of my grandfather and the, the he was always putting on shows everywhere in the church, the Grange, the uh, Summersworth. Uh, used to be a great theater in Summersworth uh, at the old uh, I think they called it the Opera House. Yeah. 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 On the corner of Washington. Yeah. Which got torn down uh, in the '60s, sometime. Yeah. Michael, is this the the ticket office? That's the ticket office now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's he's found theaters all over the place. He was also uh, some of you might remember Rochester Music Theater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had started that uh, back in '59 or '60. This is all the time he's milking cows and he's very busy. Um, you know, milking cows, farming took a lot of work, and theater takes a lot of work. Neither of them make much money, so he decided he'd rather not, he'd rather make not much money doing theater instead of make not much money um, doing cows. <laughs> so actually, this there's a couple of pictures, a couple of drawings by uh, Bob Nielsen, who was an artist from Dover. Some of you might remember Bob Nielsen. Anyways, these are um, some drawings of the very first show at Hackmatack, which was Ten Nights in the Bar Room. Uh, I am in. Uh, I am in here, but you can guess where I am. Did you have long hair then? I did have long hair then. This is 1972. A lot of people had long hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I don't know. This, by the way, this I thought you might be interested. Here's a flyer that uh, my dad um, did the very f first flyers okay. for the Hackman Tech the very first year. So I'll, you can pass this around. He's around. It's, it's probably the bale of twine that he tied him up in. So I hated to untie him. We, ne we haven't, haven't used them all yet, up yet, so I saved them. <laughs> so you can read this one if you want. kind of talks about the shows and the, and the farm a little bit. It's New England's newest and most charming. <laughs> no one had ever been here before, so it was the newest. And he decided it was the most charming. <laughs> uh, this is a picture. It was originally, the bomb was originally white, and then he, he uh, painted it red. Uh, some of you may remember when it was red. Uh, and then we repainted it white um, a few years later. And all the people who came to it while it was red said, Oh, it's supposed to always be red. Well, no. It was, it was white to begin with. It's interesting if... Uh, my, my dad painted it red because it was easy to put the paint, the red paint, over white. You, you know, trying to put the white paint over red is a lot more difficult. So, um, but you might know that there are a lot of farmers that paint their bonds red. And do you know why they painted their bonds red? Anybody know? Because it absorbs the heat. The dark color absorbs the heat. And um, the you want to keep the cows warm in the wintertime. That isn't the problem of the Hatman Tech Playhouse, keeping cows warm in the winter. We have the opposite problem. We want to keep people cool in the summer. So we change it back to white. That so seems to make more sense. Um, and this is a picture of my dad uh, actually uh, directing a show. That show is. Uh, was a yes, sir. What's the origin of the name Hackman? Hackman is a tree. Uh, you remember from fifth grade, deciduous yeah. and coniferous trees. Well, coniferous trees like a pine tree, spruce tree. Um, Hackman is a coniferous tree, but it loses its spills in the winter time, like a deciduous tree. So. Um, if you look at the Hackman Tech tree in the wintertime, it looks dead. So if you look at our theater in the wintertime, uh, it looks dead. So Hackman Tech <laughs> seems to be inappropriate. And you know, I was there when he named the, uh, when he named the theater. And uh, you'll never guess what the second choice was. The, the Hay House Playhouse. Oh, yeah, it's really house. good too. I like that. Don, you like that? Yeah, it's a Hay House Playhouse. They're equal you can still use that. Yeah, yeah, that's going to take you copyright. Tough for grabs. Yeah, that's tough for grabs. <laughs> Hay House Playhouse. That's pretty good. And, you know, I bring our flyer from this year uh, for you. You can all take one. 
And we have, we're, we're doing one show right now, uh, Little Women. It's the last show of the summer. So it's if you great. come, you'll enjoy it. Has anybody seen Little Women? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, good. Good. I'm glad you said that. Because <laughs> that would have ruined my setup. But so if you want to come out and see Little Women, that's this week. But we have um, music all uh, every weekend on Sunday. Summer's on the porch, or Sunday's on the porch, uh, which is a real entertaining time. Just come by, listen to the band that we have, and uh, have a bison hot dog, uh, and just kind of have an enjoyable time. Bring your grandkids, bring, bring your kids, your grandkids, bring your grandmother if you want. What time is that? Uh, what time, you know? Is there uh, every Sunday from 1 to 4? Thanks. 1 to 4. Yeah, it's a very relaxing yeah. time. Um, different kinds of bands. I didn't bring all the bands. I forgot to bring that flyer. Um, we've got some great bands coming up. This week is a strings band. They're like a Celtic strings band, which will be really good. Um, then we've got a bluegrass band the following weekend, which will be really nice. So... Uh, we talked a lot about my dad, and then I took over the theater uh, when he passed away. Uh, so now I'm the, and my wife Gail is sitting in the back, we are the owners of the property. And uh, we, a few years ago, some of you may know, we decided to close the theater down, and everyone was upset, <laughs> including my family. And some members of my family said, we're going to keep it going. So. They're going to keep it going. They pay the bills. Uh, sometimes I pay a bill or two. <laughs> I, I seem to be very busy. Uh, but they're very busy, too, believe me. There's a lot of work to do uh, around the theater and around the farm. It's the animals on the farm. One of my sons uh, raises the bison and the pigs, basically for, for harvesting. Uh, but we also have uh, other kinds of animals just for looking at and playing with, which uh, you kind of come over and visit any time. Do you know how many shows that, over the years that you've had? Um, I, you know, I counted them once and I can't remember. Do you remember, Aaron, what our total number of shows were? Yeah. Uh, we stopped them. I, I don't know. But, you know, roughly, you know, think about five a year since 1972. Times, times 50 years. So, yeah. 250. 250. Plus, uh, uh, some years, uh, my dad did six shows a summer, and uh, he also had um, a, a show, a theater in Dover for quite a few years, yeah. uh, Hackmatack Repertory Theater. He put on shows there. He wasn't losing enough money here in Berwick, so he figured, yeah. let's move, lose money in Dover, too. <laughs> so we can lose money anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's, it's quite a few, two, 250 plus, I'm sure, because sometimes you would do some extra shows in the spring and the fall, uh, you know, just for a weekend or two weekends, not, not several weeks at a time. I'm, I don't know what the right formula is for how many shows and what kind of shows. Uh, do you have a favorite of, 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 of since A favorite? Uh, there, so many shows of favorites of mine. Um, the first time we did, uh, funny thing happened on the way to the forum, uh, Blaine Pickett played the lead in that. And if you remember Blaine, Blaine is hilarious. And when you have a guy in that play who is hilarious, the show is tremendously funny. Um, of recent years, I've really loved um, Bridges of Madison County. Uh, it's just, it's a romantic show, and n not like the book, not like the movie. It was about farmers, and uh, you know, the living on a farm, and you know, it was very touching. And I, I really like that one. But there's been so many good, we, we so many good shows over the years. My favorite was the Maniac. The Maniac. The, Ma the Maniac, by the way, was a show that David Kay, some of you may know David, David wrote it, he's a theater professor at UNH. He wrote it about my father. And he did, it was, yeah, it's about my father. Uh, as kind of a tribute to him. Mm. Hilarious, hilarious. David, there was only two people in the show, and just David and another guy, and they played people, and they played animals, 
and they played Grangers. They had this they had this big flat where they would stick their heads in in different spots in the flat where they'd be at the Grange meeting. And uh, if you look at the flat, you know, there's like 10 or so Grangers there. And the, but the faces would be open, you know. So they'd stick their face in, they'd be one Granger. Then the other one would be another Granger, you know, maybe a woman or a man. Or, and then there's a little baby that was at the Granger meeting. Think of, ah! <laughs> it, it was hilarious. It was, it was so funny. Hilarious. You should do that again. It was I, so I, good. I, I will tell David <laughs> when I so see him. Good. Hilarious. And then he'd be the animals at the house. It was all about my dad changing the bond from the animals to a theater. And it was all the animals and, you know, first they protested and then they wanted to be on the stage. In fact, in, in fact, I, I, this is, in fact, I had a lady come out afterwards. I said, did the animals really want to be on the stage? <laughs> uh, no, this, the animals are not real. I mean, animals are real, but they can't talk. Hey, you know, it, 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 no, that, it, it, was, it was so fun. hilarious. It was, it was hilarious. It, it yeah. Really was. yeah. Wow. That's I'm glad you remember I, that. Yeah, we yeah. just we just moved to uh, New England. It was the and, uh, <laughs> and it was it was on there. We got, had to check this little theater out. You know, yeah. And I laughed my ass off. It was so funny. Well, that's great. Yeah, I, I, I love that. What about somebody else's favorite show at Hatman Tech? I want you to tell the story about the bug in the ear. The bug in the ear. Of the actor. Yeah, we've had a few bug stories <laughs> over the over the years. In, in fact, this is a different story than, than that one, but I will tell that one. But um, we have uh, Monique Peasley, who is like, she's one of the best actors in the Seacoast. I don't know if you go down to um, Seacoast Rep, uh, not Seacoast Rep, um, Huh? Yeah. The Hampshire yeah. Theater Project. She does a lot of shows there. Very, 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 very professional actress. Really, 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 really good. We did, um, a few years ago, we did um, uh, uh, A Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. She played the mother. And uh, she came back from, uh, you know, we, they, they had off a few days, came back on Wednesday. And she went, she had to, had to do a quick change. Supposed to change from, you know, uh, her night closed, and, and then the next morning, which happens like within seconds, the next morning she's serving coffee to her husband, okay, and um, she goes, in, all they do is put a bathrobe on her, you know, she goes in and puts a bathrobe over her clothes, and now it's morning time, okay. So she goes in to get her bathrobe, and she puts her, her arm in, and there's a big bug in there, and she doesn't like bugs. <laughs> and when I saw her come out on stage, Without her bathrobe on, you know, it was so unlike her. She's so professional. Have her not do something that's supposed to be done was, I, I just couldn't believe it. But she just didn't want to deal with the bug that was in her sleep. She had no idea what kind of bug it was. She had no time to, to check it out. But the story you were, the bug story you were talking about, we, we, this was, um, the show was, um, Uh, one of the big Roger and Hammerstein's show, uh, the one that's uh, uh, with the beautiful song "We Kiss in the Shadow." What so what show is that? Um, not flower drum song. Uh, Amy. Amy, come on. Hold on, I'm looking. He's looking it up. We kiss in the shadow. It's uh, can't remember. Anyways, we had a guy from. Uh, well, you looked that up. Uh, um, that would be King and I. Uh, King and I. King and I. Right? King and I. Yes. Yeah, King and I. Yeah. Uh, Big Rogers and Hammerstein show. Very good show. And uh, that, he, that's one of the most beautiful songs of R Roger and Hammerstein ever wrote. We Kiss in the Shadow. About a guy and a uh, uh, kind of ethnic girl. They're trying to get together, but it's, they're not allowed to be together. And. Uh, so this, we had a guy who was from uh, Plymouth State College that sang that song. And uh, he sang it on a matinee one day. And it just, it was not good at all. And he had a beautiful voice. I mean, you only did that if you had a beautiful voice. And it was awful, awful. And uh, so afterwards, he, he after the show, he says, you know, I just don't feel very good. 
So they brought him to the emergency room. And at the emergency room, they pulled out this huge bug out of his ear. Oh. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> it was awful. Like I mean, it, it was it was awful. It was huge, and it was in his ear. And that's why I mean, it, if it was in your ear, you wouldn't sing very good either. I <laughs> guarantee. And it was so big. I mean, we wouldn't even believe it. But he he brought it home for everybody to see all over the theater. That's interesting, yeah. Uh, what are other questions I can I've, I've gone on. It's supposed to be 15 minutes. It's as long as you, this, oh. is, this is what we're here to do. Today, okay, so. all right. Well, um, I mean, I can go on and on and on. Uh, but um, what about you guys? Any other questions about Hack Attack? There's a great question about the name, Hack Attack. When does next year's schedule come out? Uh, Am, you go ahead, Am. Great question. Um, we're, we're, you know, aiming for October. Okay. Is what we're, uh, our ideal is, <laughs> but we're not, we're not quite sure. So we're in the final stages right now of picking the place. Mm -hmm. But then once you pick all the shows, you need to go and find, find out if you can actually get the rights to them. Right. And sometimes there's like a going, you know, back and forth between that and like the. Uh, whatever organization hold the rights. So you don't, you can't automatically just do any of these shows. You have to, you have to have rights. The people who write the shows, and they should be, they should be paid for their their work. And so uh, Rogers and Hammerstein get paid. They're both dead, but their their uh, heirs get paid now, and that's how it works. And uh, uh, that's the system you have to follow. And and it gets complicated legally. I mean, if, for example, if uh, the King and I happened to be on Broadway, they probably wouldn't let us do it. Or if they were doing a revival of, of the King and I or expected in a few years, they probably wouldn't let us do it. Or if it's, if it's going to be at a place like uh, um, Portland Merrill Auditorium, they will have bought the rights for Maine, and they won't let us do it. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of, I mean, if it's a, um, uh, if it's a professional or if it's a um, amateur production, it makes a difference too. And we kind of walked the line at Hatman Tech. We're we're an equity professional, equity the a professional non-equity theater. So we kind of walked the line between amateur and a professional. Some to some companies were amateur, some were professional. We're not equity. If you are like a Broadway house, you have to be equity. You have to pay your actors so much money. Um, Give uh, uh, give money to their uh, union and pay for their uh, Medicare and, and medical expenses and whatever, uh, but that's an equity act, equity house. We're not equity, so we don't go through that. But we do pay our actors, so we're professional. But so kind of yes, sir. Did the play by David K. Have you done any other local writers? Yeah, David K. is uh, <laughs> University of, of New Hampshire professor, and he's. I mean, he's been playing, working at our theater for years. He did it because he wants to see his stuff performed. Uh, in fact, last year we did a play that he wrote, uh, a, 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 a play on uh, uh, Mark Twain show that he wrote. And same thing. He, he wanted it performed, and so we produced it and performed it for him. I mean, we can do that if we want to. But it doesn't have the same name recognition as a you know, big Rogers and Hammerstein play. Do you ever do Our, Our Town? Uh, we've done Our Town several times. It was one of my father's uh, favorite shows. In fact, uh, growing up, I did the boy part in Our Town, and my, my sister would do the girl part in Our Town, and my father would do the stage manager, and we'd go to the different uh, clubs in town, the different, uh, we'd go to maybe historical society, and my dad would say, well, we're going to do a rendition of Our Town, and it would be me and my sister and him. <laughs> uh, so, but we've done it at the theater several times, too, at the Hackney Tech. It's a wonderful play. Yeah. Yes, sir. Ma'am, you have a question? No? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Question? Yeah. I actually have a question for you. All right. I would imagine growing up in a family theater situation is different than a lot of other upbringings. Do you, do you want to speak to that? I, would, I, I always think about, like, at what moment did you go over somebody else's house and say, like, 
where do you guys keep your stage? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a, a yeah, great question. I do think that I'm one of the few people in the U.S. who grew up with a theater in their backyard. I feel like we're probably a very small portion. Also includes my two of my aunts. <laughs> you know, lots of, I don't know, not, not too many other people. Um, uh, it, was, it was, I mean, honestly, you know, an incredible way to grow up, of course. It was, it opened up um, so much, you know, in, in, the, in, in the fact of like learning about the world. Um, you know, every night I got to see shows, right? And you get to experience so much of the world by watching all these different shows. And, you know, every two weeks, every three weeks, the show changes and you're kind of in a new world. Um, so I think just like open up like the creativity of a child, you know, it was, you know, it was wonderful. It was really cool. Um, and then I think that I, I just had the ability to learn so many skills as well that, you know, I think a lot of people don't get the, really the chance to learn. And I really had like a whole area that I could learn, whether it was about, about lights or about administration or about, you know, food safety in the concession stand, <laughs> you know, there was no, no end to kind of what was available to learn. So it was, yeah, a very remarkable way to grow up. Uh, look, ask the same question to Amy, my niece Amy. Yeah. <laughs> so we probably had similar but different, so there's 15 of us cousins, and Aram happens to be the youngest, and I happen to be the oldest. So, um, so we probably had some similar experiences, but some different ones too. Um, one thing I will add to that is just getting to meet so many different people over the years. I mean, we're exposed to all sorts of different people from different backgrounds. I think that was probably a spectacular thing. In fact, I have met people since, like from, um, for example, I lived in Connecticut for a number of years. Um, had a friend there who, you know, when someone asks where you're from, I don't know if you guys do this, but you're like, oh, it's just a small town and, you know, you've probably never heard of it. Um, it was one of those situations and uh, she's Berwick. I'm familiar with Berwick. I said, oh, really? She's like, yeah, I, um, I acted there for a summer. I'm like, you did. <laughs> um, and lo and behold, you know, she's acting there while I'm working in the box office and we had this whole you know thing that we didn't remember each other or anything but it's just funny who you run into that got their start there or that came through for a summer some people were there for multiple years you really get to know people i think that was one of my most favorite things was that and then as any guptal cousin will tell you you have worked in sort of any any different area uh there which is the most fun for, like we all started i know for me personally i started strawberry picking when we used to have strawberry fields out back um and then moved to concessions and then to the box office and then you know backstage and then on stage so it there was no better way to to grow up for sure did any of your family you ever go out to california and like you know do or, or new york and do like either work for the industry uh, at large or anything? No. No, no, no. Family. No, no. No. Not with I mean, family. No. 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 Keep it keep it keep it here. Keep it <laughs> <local>. <laughs> well I think um, well, I think all of our family members had a have had a great time over the years. But I think they've also uh, recognized that uh, they better have something else up their sleeve for their life's, uh, for their life's journey because um, it, it, to, be a, uh, um, to make it in the acting world, you really have to be lucky and you have to be good. Um, you know, and, and you, need, you need to both, be both lucky and good. And I, I don't know, I think some of our family members are very good, uh, but um, maybe they just weren't lucky enough. I don't know. <laughs> my dad, I, I, my dad loved acting, loved it. You would never say he was the best actor in the world. He wasn't, but he loved it. And the other thing he loved, maybe more than acting, was getting people together uh, in a community 
and to, to work on the project and complete that project. He loved to do that. The project that he was involved in was theater. But he would start theater everywhere. He would start wherever he went. He would start theater. And, you know, if you weren't good on the stage, he could use you. you use everybody at the theater. You can use them a technical. You can, you can paint, paint sets. You can sweep the floor. You can, during intermission, you can do this or that. And there's always something for somebody to do. Always. Uh, and not only is it... Um, it necessary, but um, but you're needed, and there's a, a sense when you participate, the sense of being needed, even though you don't get paid. Everyone knows that you need to do your job, and you know if you don't get that, if you don't walk on with that piece, that set piece, you might not have a, a role. But that the show's going to get screwed up if you don't walk in with the tree and put it in the place where it's supposed to be put, and then leave. You know, that someone's going to say, hey, what happened to the tree? We needed to hide it behind that tree. It wasn't there. You know, oh, I forgot to put the tree on. You know, uh, that's an important role, you know. Especially when you're not really hiding. You're just kind of pretending to hide behind the tree. <laughs> Do you know how your dad caught the bug? Do you know how he became involved initially in theater? I, I don't know. I, at that time, he graduated from Berwick High School in... Um, uh, 43, 44, uh, and then he went to the Navy. Um, he actually was, um, he went to the Navy and actually was a, uh, uh, served on uh, Harry Truman's personal yacht as, his, uh, as a guard. And uh, when he came back, he, he had done, I don't really think they did theater in the school at that time. There was very few people in the school in his graduating class. Most of the, the males had already gone to World War II. Uh, they were a group of females, but I don't think they ever had a high school play, so I'm not sure, but I don't think so. He was involved, if you look in the yearbook, he was involved in the, uh, the debate club. I think that's about as, about as much theater as he did at the time. But then after, the, um, after he served his time in the Navy, he went to the University of Maine and to study agriculture and somehow got involved with uh, the theater program at, at University of Maine in Orono and just came back with a real love for the theater. Now, I, I don't know if, I really don't know if he did any plays, although this is this picture that I, I showed you. I mean, he was very young at that time. I'm not sure if that was after, yeah, I'm not sure if that was after the, uh, or after his college career, I think it was. Michael, do you know if he was, joined the American Legion? Was he in post 79? He was not in the American League, no. no. He was something I wasn't involved in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts or questions? Or? No? No. Is there anyone in your family that is more interested in the early history of your family? Uh, of, of my family? Amy's very interested. She she's, keeps as much tabs, and both Aaron, Amy and Aaron, the oldest cousin and the youngest cousin. <laughs> Amy is my brother's uh, oldest daughter. Uh, they both are very interested in history of the family. Uh, Johnny Wilson, you remember Johnny Wilson? Anybody remember Johnny Wilson, who was the, uh, worked as the, as the uh, code enforcement officer here in Berwick for a long time? He was... Uh, it was only like 15 years ago, wasn't it? 20 years ago? <laughs> Anyways, Johnny uh, was my cousin. He lived, by the way, this is kind of an interesting factoid too. Johnny's mother and father, my Aunt Maggie, who built the farm across the street. You know the, across the street from where I live is the, the uh, early learning center? Mm -hmm. uh, well, that was, that was a chinchilla ranch. That was my aunt's house, and she had several buildings just like that. The other ones have now been gone. But she grew, raised chinchillas. She was one of the biggest chinchilla farmers in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And we had some chinchillas at our farm too for a while. But anyways, uh, she, she raised chinchillas and then um, uh, uh, her son John, who was code enforcement officer I mentioned, was, is very interested. There's, there's a lot of family history in his collection as well.
but you probably didn't know there was a big chinchilla ranch here in town. Now it's a daycare center. At, at, at now the, the daycare center. Yeah. Is, there, is there a moment where you feel like when you look back on, on the, your time at running the theater that you think of as like this, this moment that, that defines that time for you? But, but after your dad and when, when you, you were putting on shows, and was there something where you feel like, man, we really touched people, or you look out and everybody's weeping or laughing? Or I can't tell you how, how many times people have left shows weeping or laughing. Usually not at the same time. <laughs> but many, many, many times we've touched people. Um, Amazing, and uh, and not only, not only, I mean, with good performances, but I mean, just I, I know a lot of people just like coming because we're it's kind of an enjoyable place to be. We've always tried to make it enjoyable. Uh, some some people have come out and said, "I don't want you guys to ever change," and I usually said to them, "We don't have enough money to change. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it takes money to, to change. We just don't have enough money." But you know. Uh, if you go to Broadway and see a show, they're very good. I'm not saying don't go to Broadway and see a show. But um, the more money they have, the more uh, they, ha they can spend on technical things that make the show really interesting, uh, which is OK. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, really. But we will never have that kind of money. So we have to use things like imagination and um, acting skills um, to in good direction, because you can't solve a problem really with, with money. You have to solve it with having imagination, uh, having creativity. And that's one thing that we've always had, is um, tried to find people that are very creative to work for us. People, and the other thing, too, that, that I, I think that we have an advantage in over some other shows is that, you know, sometimes on Broadway, for example, or other theaters, you know, they put on a show for months, years, you know, multiple decades, and if, it's, if you're acting in that kind of environment, it's a, it gets to be a pretty routine job for you. And you don't really maybe give it all that you can, like maybe at the jobs that you do and have done for 30, 35 years. You know, it's hard to keep up that pace and that the level of that you should be doing but you know if you're gonna if you're doing a show for you know two weeks at a time you're at that you're at a peak it's interesting too um we just had a um we just had to we had a, somebody got sick last week at the theater just for the show we're doing right now little women and uh, so we had to replace a couple of people we moved up two of the people in the cast this girl was playing this role, a very small role. We moved her up to one of the leading roles and then moved somebody else into that role. And you'd say, well, geez, the show's going to fall apart. It becomes better because these people are all now even more excited to do something that they weren't doing before. And they just give it all they have. And everybody that's around in the theater that's with them, they really want to give this new person a chance to do it. And they're all at the top of their game. It's very, very interesting. That doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean the show's going to be worse. It, sometimes it gets a lot better uh, because people are all trying, even, even trying to do better than they were before. So that's kind of an interesting phenomenon. And I'm sure you see that on Broadway, too. When, when somebody, and you see it in the movies, when they have movies of people that have gone from below to the star. Uh, and it's really true. So. Anyways, another question about my family or uh, about uh, Hatman Attack? Everybody got a flyer? Come, you keep coming? Did, did, I feel like maybe, I'm not sure if you said it tonight, but maybe Connor told me that, that your last name means Fa, Fa, am I, am I getting this right? Gub Tail, the old name? Gub. Yeah. Did he make it up? Because if you make it up with authority, it's okay. <laughs> you tell me. Do you, is I don't know, I don't know that. But maybe he, Connor is my another one of my sons. And and do you know what your family when they came over 
here? Like what they were initially, were, were they farmers to begin with? Yeah, yeah, they were farmers. I, I will tell you another little story. This is kind of, you'll all be interested in this, I think. Um, <coughs> My family and a lot of the people that settled in Berwick and Portsmouth and the whole New England area all came from uh, Eastern England. Uh, and I'm sure there's, isn't there a Berwick over there in Eastern England? Yes, what are you saying? Whenever you're finished with that, Gubtel is a two word name. It's Scots Gaelic and Old Norse in origin. Gub is Scottish Gaelic slang, for insult for the word mouth. Tail meaning tail, so it's basically your butt in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you say that with authority? Yes, sir, it's right here. <laughs> Wiki don't lie. <laughs> Good. Wiki don't Scott's lie. <laughs> Scott's Gaelic. Is that what Quan told you? Yeah, he's not. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, I, um, when we were, um, when we made the re major renovation in our house, um, tearing out the walls, we found, was it two or three little shoes? Two? Three. Two, two little shoes. One, well, one was a little baby shoe, and one was uh, an adult shoe. But they were obviously very, very, very old. And we, um, we saved them. It was very interesting. We found them in the eaves of the house. Um, put them back. We are going to put them back. They ward off evil spirits. They do. They, they ward off evil spirits. He's right. This was uh, a few years later. We went to the North Bur i mean, excuse me—the old Berwick Historical Society, who had a lady specialist at the Salem State University uh, come in to talk just about that and how they uh, people that lived in that part of England and settled into New England—that's uh, what they would do—is put them back, put them in the eaves of the houses, especially over windows, doors, and chimneys to ward off evil spirits. And we were, when we were down there, they had, another fellow had come from York, they found the same thing in his house, and they found a couple in the Strawberry Bank houses when they re, uh, restored some of those. Ralph's house. In uh, Ralph's house too. Yeah, they had yeah. that uh, main accent too over there. That main accent? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have one of those. No, no. Oh. Over in uh, England. Over in England? Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I can go and talk to them in person. There you go. There you go. Yeah. It's got scaling. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So we have those shoes. Uh, oh, very, very old shoes. Anyways, other questions? So, how are we doing on time? We kill 15 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this, for being here. I could, I just want to say that I could listen to your stories for hours, and I really invited you here because I just wanted to hear your stories all about the farm and your family and the theater, but it seems like there are other folks here tonight who feel the same way. So I, I think we all can agree that, that Hack Attack is a treasure, and we're so glad that the mantle has been passed and that the theater remains open, and I think it is really the most special thing we have in Berwick. I really do. Well, I'm very you. grateful for it. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, very well. well, thank you all for joining us for the uh, Historical Society meeting for okay. August. And. Uh,